Hey, how's it going? Varlamore just came out a few hours ago and I just woke up, I did one of the quests, and I haven't even started exploring anything yet. Based on every other piece of content that's been added to OSRS, I have a very strong feeling there's going to be a lot of Easter eggs. Easter eggs, if you don't know, are usually a message, image, or hidden feature that references pop culture, like movies, other games, celebrities, and so on. I may include other things that aren't strictly Easter eggs, but are more so just random fun facts that I discover as I explore today. So while everyone else is streaming Colosseum and making YouTube videos and guides on the new content, I'll be staying in my lane and doing what I do best, which is finding mildly interesting facts that make you say, huh, that's kinda neat. So with that said, I present to you some number of easter eggs in Varlamore. I'll let post-production me edit in the number because I don't know how many we're going to find. 25. The title is going to say 25. And also, it's not an easter eggs video anymore, now it's going to be 25 things you didn't notice in Varlamore, which I guess you already knew because it's the title and you clicked on the video. So anyways, now for real, me and my GIM teammate are going to start exploring. There have been a lot of new animals added with Varlamore. Some are just background scenery, some you can hunt, some you can attack, but there's been a fan favorite that so many people have been asking for and hoping for for a long time, and that is the capybara. Capybaras are a real animal native to South America, and they've become sort of an internet meme in recent years. Since the release of OSRS, Jagex has been known to add plenty of memes, so this is yet another to add onto that list. Capybaras are known for eating oranges and really liking oranges a lot, and there's lots of popular pictures and videos of them going underwater and emerging with oranges on their heads. Well, there is in fact a capybara walking around balancing an orange on its head. This is probably going to end up being my favorite thing in Varlamore. There's also a dung in the area, and if you examine it, it says bad cappy. Also want to mention that there's even more capybaras in the Hunter's Guild. Another one of the animals added with Varlamore is toucans, or toucans. There's black and white toucans on the eastern shore of the Avium Savanna, and also some slightly northwest of Sunset Coast. But if you go south of Rallus's Rise, you can also find a red and yellow version of them. And on Rallus's Rise, there's mountain toucans. And if you examine them, you get a great pun that reads, two can play at this game. On top of that, the additions of Toucans and Varlamore may or may not be a reference to the popular OSR's Twitter user Toucan. While the last one may not actually be a reference to a specific person, this next one 100% is. Orsaga is underneath the Hunter's Guild and is dressed like a witch. This is a reference to one of the members of the OSR's community, Witchcrafty. She's become popular on social media for all the OSR's art that she's made, including comics, plushies, and much more. Here's the evidence to show that it's a direct reference. Orsaga is dressed like a witch, and the examine text says, a master of her craft, as in witch crafty. In game, she's wearing Baron slippers, and Baron, the duke pet, is one of the plushies that she made that gained a lot of traction on social media. She also has a pet chinchampa next to her in game, which is another one of the plushies that she made. I like the examine text of the chin that says those paws weren't made for sewing, which is ironic because it's meant to be a chinchampa that she sewed together. I'm wondering if that might also be a reference to the 1966 song These Boots Are Made For Walkin' by Nancy Sinatra, but maybe I'm thinking too deep into it. And to top it all off, the character literally says, as someone that makes small, soft versions of creatures, this is the place to be. In one of the houses south of Fortis, when you go upstairs, we found these weird markings on the ground that you can't examine or anything. But when I zoomed in, I realized that they're actually small versions of some of the animals found around Varlamore. Considering that there's a couple bunk beds in this room, those are probably wooden toys that the kids play with. It's so cool seeing all the little details that Jagex added in. This is exactly the point of this video. We need to find as many more of these as possible. In the Twilight's Promise quest, they referenced the beheading of Emperor Imafor, and then we found this just west of the Fortis Bazaar, a beheaded statue of Imafor. I'm not a big lore guy, so Spooktog was reading the quest dialogue closer than I was, and she said that the people didn't like him, which is why they beheaded him and put up this statue as a way to represent their disdain for him. There's a book that came out with Dragon Slayer 2 that can be found in the Myths Guild library called Imafor's Betrayal, which might be worth the read if you're into lore. 
but either way, it's cool to get more parts of a story that goes all the way back to at least 2018. There's someone named Tourist here, who is like the normal woman you'd see on the mainland, like in Lumbridge, whereas all the citizens here have their own unique Varlamore style clothing. And when you talk to her, one of the possibilities of things she can say to you is hello there, or should I say Nilsal. Nilsal is a greeting in the language or like the culture of Varlamore. And it's funny because it reminds me of real life tourists, like an American going to a Spanish speaking country and being excited to say hola and basic phrases like that to really immerse themselves in the foreign culture. In the food shop east of the bazaar, the food food shop owner has an orange on his head, and you could even ask him, why do you have an orange on your head? To which he responds with, why don't you have an orange on your head? With a great little extra capybara reference. And yes, he does in fact sell oranges in the shop. When you open up the map, this area doesn't have a label until you zoom pretty far in, and then you could see it's called Colossal Worm Remains. You probably know the size of the worms in the Mount Karulm dungeon, but this really goes to show how massive their ancestors used to be. In the northwest section, there's a table with a staff and an air rune, and it must have just been hotfixed, but before you were able to pick up this air rune. It wasn't stackable with normal air runes, and you couldn't cast spells with it, and supposedly it has the same item ID as an air rune piece of scenery item from Recipe for Disaster. So I imagine Imagine it's kind of like the BGS from the murder mystery quest where it appears to be the item it says it is, but it's not actually meant to ever be picked up or used, so if you did find a way to ever get it, you couldn't crash the market or use it or anything. And apparently before the hotfix, normal air runes were unlimited, like one air rune would last permanently, and they were never being used up when you casted spells that required them, but obviously that's been fixed now. There's a guy named Rue Merald who is in three locations, and in each location he'll tell you to dig nearby. At the location south of Rallus's Rise, you'll get an emerald. Then at the location east of the Hunter's Guild, you'll dig up a ruby. And at the location south of the Colosseum, you'll get a sapphire. And of course, his name, Rue Merald, is probably a play on words because it combines ruby and emerald. Maybe in the future, it'll become more clear if it's a play on some other words like rumor, old, or something, but we don't really know for now. People have only found three of his spots so far, and it's speculated that the meaning of this will be revealed in a future update. Or maybe he'll at least appear in more locations in the future where you can get a diamond or possibly even a dragonstone. But either way, because the only gems are ruby, sapphire, and emerald, the overall consensus of the community is that it's a reference to the YouTuber Wild Mudkip, as those are the three Pokemon games that Mudkip originally came from. In the dungeon that you go down for the Twilight's Promise quest, right before the gate, you can clip through the wall. It only works when you click on the minimap though, you cannot get the yellow click by clicking on the wall itself. And you can't get past the gate this way either, it's just like three extra tiles in the wall, I guess were accidentally made walkable. And I suspect very soon that this will be patched, so enjoy it while it lasts. These aren't exactly hard to find, but it might be easy to miss if you're not exploring, so I want to show that there's now alpacas in OSRS which are really cute, and they're kind of like the sheep of Varlamore. And in a similar vein, there's these buffaloes, and the buffaloes are like the cows of Varlamore. You've probably gotten the idea by now that Varlamore is meant to be a takeoff of an ancient civilization. Well, this right here is a Roman aqueduct, and those were used to transport fresh water to populated areas. But now we know that the Romans actually stole the design from the kingdom of Varlamore. Even though it says it's fresh water, just like in real life, it's not advised to drink out of a birdbath. Just make sure Settled's Nightmare account doesn't drink out of this. This is only the first batch of Varlamore content, and there is more planned to be released in the future. So as of right now, there's a big empty area preventing Varlamore from being connected to Karend, and there is a viewable but inaccessible area to the north. But by using the detached camera plugin, we can kind of get a sneak peek of what's up there, which I'm sure Jagex intended for players to see, so that way we would build up hype and anticipation and speculation. Although I've got to say, it does look a little bit sus. We've got three dogs huddled around a stolen cabbage. Now what is the significance of these dogs? The first one, Molossus, is an extinct dog breed from ancient Greece. The next one, Jolo, is short for Jolo eats Quintle, which is an ancient hairless dog breed which does still exist. And with these first two, there is multiple of these two types of dogs wandering around Fortis, but then we get to the third dog named Lola, and the question is, 
Who is she? Presleek is a member of the community who is an artist known for making RuneScape comics and animations, and posted a few months ago about their dog passing away after having spent almost 12 years together. Mod Skylark responded asking about Lola and said that they want to do something special. And now Lola is forever memorialized in the game. Seeing that whole backstory made me tear up, and this end result is such a wholesome thing to see. On another note, I'm not sure if three dogs surrounding a stolen cabbage is a reference to something, but let me know if it is. There's this iconic clip from a YouTube video titled Bruno Killer PvP Vid 2 from February 2009, where he does AGS rushing. And in this one clip, he says, watch out, someone is rushing you, as he's rushing someone, and that clip has been made into a GIF that's been reposted as a meme for at least a decade. I haven't yet made it into the Coliseum, so I don't know if this is actually real, especially because Sadud is known for photoshopping things, but even if it's fake, it's still important that you know this piece of RuneScape history if you weren't aware already. On the west coast, there's this mushroom forest place, which looks really cool, and there's a new flavor of moss giants there. They've got these mushrooms on them. If you've been exploring Varlamore, you've probably noticed a trend that there's a lot of reskins of the same monsters with different names slash themes based on their locations, like sunlight versus moonlight recolors and similar stuff like that for a lot of the new monsters, and found a new looking type of hill giant too. I saw this wooden shield spawn on the ground and that reminded me that I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of new YouTube series of Varlamore only locked accounts. So so, you know, this is going to be a pretty huge upgrade for those accounts. There's two NPCs south of the bazaar named Lavinia and Aurelia. I don't know anything about magic, but they may or may not be a reference to characters from Magic the Gathering. I haven't done Perilous Moons yet, but Slayer Music is saying that the Eclipse Moon has a similar effect to what this Yu-Gi-Oh card does, and with how similar they look, this has to be a direct reference. There's this cat underneath the Hunter's Guild, and when you pet it, it says, can you scratch my belly next? It's perfectly safe. This is a reference to real life cats because they're malicious, and if you try to pet their belly, they will in fact attack you. And side note, I'm allergic to cats, so even if they don't attack me, it's still not safe for me to scratch their bellies. And we're back to looking at the map again, but this I believe is inaccessible to view in-game, even with Runelite plugins, so you have to go to this website, osrs.world, to see the cache. I have old PC parts, so it's super laggy for me, but you can still see it. There's like an Ulm placeholder for whatever's going to end up here, which may end up being the Hailstorm Mountains group boss. And if we search what this Ulm thing is, it turns out it's the great Ulm display that's in the old school museum below the Faldor party room. The sand crabs in Karend are very populated on every world due to people wanting to AFK train their combat stats, but now there's new sand crab spots all up and down the coast of Varlamore and you could tell that Jagex specifically designed it with AFK training in mind because there's so many clusters of three, and there's even at least one cluster of four crabs as well. With the addition of all these new spots, I can't imagine anyone will ever struggle to find a spot at Sand Crabs again. If you talk to Regulus Sento next to your Kate's All, you can change Renu's color to be whatever you like, and whatever color you pick will always stay the same at all the travel locations. And boy oh boy did I manage to save the best one for last. This one will blow your mind because I haven't seen it mentioned anywhere else despite how obvious it is after you see it. So if you take the word Varlamore and reverse it, this is what you get. Now we can split this up into three separate words and translate it to its Latin roots. The first word, arrow, means love. The second part, mal, means bad, and the third part, RAV, stands for Toyota RAV4. Really makes you think, doesn't it? With that list of 25 things done, there are a few more important things that I wanted to mention that didn't really fit in with the rest of the video. First thing is that the Renderscape Varlamore bingo board has been getting very much filled out, and it's been not even 24 hours since the game update. It'll be interesting to see how this develops and if slash when it'll get filled up, and I hope we continue to get more updates on this as more and more people try out the new content and post about their experiences on social media. Next is about this quest, the riveting tale of a lily pad labor dispute. I haven't had time to do all the new quests since I was making this video, but I keep seeing over and over people saying do not spacebar through this quest and to read all the dialogue. So for those of you that normally spacebar through, if you haven't already done the quest, it sounds like this is an important one to make sure that you meticulously read everything. And finally, 
for our community highlight section of the video. The old school RuneScape player Zach, known as Adru, was trying out the new hunter contracts when this happened. Alright, surely I get the the Hunter's Guild pet today. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, I called it! I called it! On the second contract! On the second contract! What the- Talk about getting two birds stoned at once. Zach has also urged me to remind you to follow him on Twitter so he can afford to feed his family. This video is being posted 24 hours after the release of Varlamor, so I'm sure over the course of time, more and more fun facts and discoveries will be made about the region, so definitely don't think of this as even close to an exhaustive list by any means. These have been the results of day one exploration. We had a lot of fun running around and experiencing that childhood wonder and nostalgia, ooing and eyeing at all the new animals, people, lore, and areas of the game. I highly recommend you to do the same, even for a bit, and just take it in. Varlamor is going to be here forever, so there's really no rush to try and learn everything as fast as possible and master all the content as soon as you can, because if you rush to get to your end destination, once you get there, you may look back and wonder where all the time went. So slow down, take it all in, and remember to enjoy the journey.